Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and y'all, it is finally time to talk about Pat McGrath, y'all. They released some primer, some foundation, some powder, and we're going to dive in to all of it. I did pick up one of the kits that had all three of the complexion products. I didn't get the brushes because you really got no time for these expensive ass brushes, but I am really excited to dive into these today because let me tell you, just in looking at them, these are an experience. Like this packaging is stunning, and I haven't obviously tested anything out. This is completely a first impression wear test you guys know the drill but just from like a presentation standpoint they did such a beautiful job on this packaging now to kick this entire video off y'all know primer comes first and in the little kit of course there was their new primer this is their skin fetish sublime perfection primer base and this retails for $60 all by its wee little self excuse me while I choke to death but let's go ahead and read oh it's out of stock okay Pat McGrath apparently that was a very successful launch now down in the description here it says that this is the first step of mother's iconic sublime perfection system it primes smooths hydrates and renews with a sublime silken effect that instantly turns back time on your complexion by preventing trans epidermal moisture loss oh girl thank god turn back time honey just like share because this skin is like almost 30 years old she's about ready to need a nip a tuck and all kinds of other ippity tuckity ucky Puckities. And I know I already said this, but $60. I just want to like make sure everybody heard me. $60. The more that I look at these prices, the happier I am that I bought this in a set, by the way. Like, wow, the happier I am. Because for $150, bucks, like this is $60. The foundation is $68, I think, and the powder is $55. So you girl definitely have a little bit of savings coming her way, but damn girl. Well, here is the primer bottle. It is plastic. I'm not gonna lie, for $60, bucks, I kind of thought it would be um a little bit nicer, a little heavier, a little more beefy. It does come with the pump which is really nice. Let's go ahead and pump just a little bit out here. A little bit, girl. Not $10 worth, right? And then that little pink dot, I'm just gonna kind of rub that into the skin here. Y'all, this smells like some expensive, bougie-ass skincare. Let me tell you. It smells like I just walked into, like, some sort of a, like, a skincare counter for, like, really yuppie, old, fudgy ladies. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. We're gonna yup it up today, honey. It smells nice. Not sure why we need the fragrance, but it's there. Paige, why is your hair not back? Why are we not actually applying this to the face? Hello? Girl was grossly unprepared to be so damn fancy. I said, here's your one chance fancy, don't let me down. Forgive me for what I do. And what I'm gonna be doing, girl, I'm gonna be putting this on my face. So I'm gonna take a little tiny nugget here, and I'm only going to be applying this primer to this half of the face, because for those of you that are new here, again, I like to do a split primer anytime I'm testing out a new foundation. So I like to go in with a different primer over here and then I always do my control variable which is my Tatcha Silk Canvas on the other side. So while that side soaks and settles I'm just going to grab a little Tatcha Silk Canvas just to help smooth and press everything in a little. Alright so I let everything just settle in here for a minute. I'm going to look at the Pat McGrath side up close. Um, I don't see any difference like to the immediate skin area. It does feel pretty nice and smooth. It didn't like dry down and create any weird film on the skin, which I appreciate. But it's also not like overly smooth or um, silky feeling like I get with a lot of dimethicone based primers. And I guess it makes sense as to why it doesn't feel like dimethicone because according to this ingredient panel, there is no dimethicone in here interesting i do see silica and i see a couple other things that might be like cousins of dimethicone but this isn't just another one of those like silky dimethicone type primers so that's interesting okay all right all right so now it's time to start learning here about the main event this is the skin fetish sublime perfection foundation and i grabbed this in the shade light five um according to everything i could find this one would be the closest for my skin tone and i just want to show you guys like this the presentation on this foundation is beautiful it's in this really nice sleek black unicarton but it isn't just any regular unicarton it has like this nice little open to it and then inside there is your foundation and this feels so nice and sturdy. All right, and then here is the bottle, a beautiful frosted glass container so so nice and heavy i mean this has a beautiful weight to it and then according to the bottom here it is 1.18 fluid ounces which is actually about 18 percent more product than you would get with a standard foundation most of them all come with one full fluid ounce doesn't matter plastic component glass component frosted not doesn't matter the standard amount is one full fluid ounce so it is really nice that they're giving you that little you know 18 percent that's almost a fifth more product which is really really nice um again price points higher you're getting a little more the presentation is beautiful depends on what's important to you but I am ready to I think finally put this on my damn face Woo, girl let's go so here is the shade very very thin in consistency 
And oh my god, we didn't read anything about this foundation. Hello, what is wrong with me? It says here that Mother's Instantly Iconic Foundation builds weightlessly from a sheer veil to flawless medium coverage in 36 universal color choices and five shade levels custom curated for all skin types, tones, and undertones. All right, so the basic cliff notes, let's just go ahead and start applying this. I am seeing buildable to a decent medium coverage, nice silky feel, satin finish, and I'm ready to put it on. So dose of colors sponge here, and let's get it going. This is so, so thin. Holy cow. Like, it's almost settling into my skin. Oh, and that's not actually even a bad shade at all. Shade 5. All right. Light 5, that is. Not bad. I do feel like it's taking quite a bit of product with a sponge. Like, I just had two pumps on my hand. It is gone. And I literally just got this section. And it's like a very light medium coverage. So definitely going to go through a little more product. Maybe that's why they gave us that extra 18%. But let me locate a brush because, oh my God, cat hair. Cat hairs. All right, so I got three pumps here on the back of my hand and my Morphe JS1 brush. And I'm going to tap into this. I feel like I just need to get this to go a little bit farther. Like a lot of it, because it's so thin, is just getting absorbed into the sponge. Oh wow, that looks much better, okay. Definitely looking pretty nice. Even if it's just to get that base coat on with a brush, it would look really good. All right, it applied pretty quickly with the brush. I do think you get better initial coverage. I'm just going to build it up. Yeah, and it builds up pretty nice as well. Um, my only issue is that I'm getting a little bit of streakage that I don't love. Hmm. All right, let me grab just a little bit more here. And what I'm going to do is take and build up like the areas on this side where I didn't have as nice a coverage. I'm gonna see if I can build it with a brush. And then what I'll do is just kind of let it sit on the skin for about 30 seconds here, just so it can kind of start to dry down. And then to help go in and get rid of those streaks, I will press it in with a sponge. Okay, there we go, yes. And that's giving me the coverage that I went in and achieved with the brush. It's not taking it away, which is nice. All right, so I'm liking where this is at so far. And I know on camera, because it's contrasting against my chest, which is a little bit red, um, I know it looks a little bit light, but in real life, just so you guys know, this is almost my exact skin tone. Like, almost exact, that's crazy. This is probably one of the closest matches I've ever had. And I picked it out myself. Hell yes, girl. I can pick out foundation. Yes. All right, so I think we have this about as good as it's going to be. Definitely not buildable to like a high medium finish. I would say this is like an average medium, maybe a little bit below that, right in that range. Um, definitely something to wear if you like to adjust your coverage based on how much makeup you want to wear. Maybe you like light, medium, sheer. Like the description said, this is a very workable foundation as far as coverage goes, which is really, really nice for a lot of people because y'all not everybody likes to cake it on like me so um, I'm not mad at it I do think it's doing exactly what it said it would do all right so I'm just growing in with a little bit of my Tarte Shape Tape in porcelain beige I don't want anything too crazy or over the top but you guys know I do use this to shape out the face a little bit all right so we are good set down here's my situation though so far with this foundation I do feel like it's oxidizing a little bit you can't probably see it too much on camera because it's not so much oxidizing in the way of depth of color but in the undertone I feel like it got a little bit more yellow on my skin I'm not mad at it it's still looking nice um, as far as the self setting factor I do definitely feel like it is drying down and I can definitely feel like some tightness over my cheek region that I am really not loving um, I'm hoping that this is one of those foundations though that when you mix it with powder it actually kind of helps loosen it up a little bit and make it meld in with your skin and speaking of powder now it's time for this little double right here. This is their Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder. Now, I have this in the shade Light One. It looks like a white setting powder, like the traditional one, if you were to put just a boop of color to it, which I'm not mad at it. That'll actually take away quite a bit of, like, the flash aspect. I'm just comparing it here, the way it looks up against the Jeffree Star powder. This is in Fair, and it's definitely lighter than that powder, so... All right, we're going to um, give it a test, though, obviously. It says in the description that this is a luxurious, silky, soft, and super blendable powder. It is the ultimate finishing touch to set makeup for flawless, lasting wear. Weightless and brilliantly buildable, it takes your look from divine to sublime. Formulated to complement sublime foundation, it's available in five shades that are uniquely calibrated to correspond to the foundation's 36 color true hues. By the way, this also retails for $55. Okay. And we appear to have one of these little net situations in there. And then here is the color. It is really, really nice and bright, which I'm not mad about. 
Oh girl, she bright. All right, I'm gonna test the flashback on that real quick here. I'm just gonna grab a little puddle, put it on my hand. I have it good and rubbed in. Give me just a second. Focus and photo actually not bad in the flashback region it is a little bit brighter but I feel like that could just as easily be the hue of the powder up against my hand so so far so good now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna apply it and first off I'm going to start under eye I'm gonna repack out my little creases here cuz y'all never want to set a crease grab some product and throw it on now typically I would set with something a little bit more robust than this I would use like my hourglass powder that's one of my favorites my Maybelline fit me is my other favorite um, but I do really, really want to test this foundation with its powder and just see if that system worked and if it worked better with one primer or the other. I like to set the under eyes and my forehead, my little Hulk wrinkle right there with a sponge. And then what I'll go do here is grab my big old fluffy brush, my Morphe JH01, and I will take a little bit of this powder, kind of tap it on here. And then I like to just lightly kind of fluff that all over the face. Now I'm only setting this foundation like this because it does feel very um, stiff already on the skin. And typically when I'm working with a drier formula or something that is more self-setting, if you will, um, I do go in a lot lighter with powder in my first step just because I need to get a feel for how cakey the foundation is going to sit on my skin. <coughs> you guys, I'm not kidding. Ooh, there is something very cough about this powder. I apply setting powder literally every day of my life and I've never coughed this much. I don't know why but there's something about this that is just making me cough. And it doesn't smell, like it doesn't have a, an overwhelming fragrance to it. So I have no idea what's going on. But girl, she's getting to me. She's getting in my lungs, honey. All right, so we are on and set down. Now I'm not mad at how it's looking right now, but we are actually at a point now where I have to scuttle off of camera, go get ready. I'm going to film another video with some other products, which you will see very soon. So hang tight and I will be right back. And okay, you guys, I am back. I have the rest of my face on. And if you are wondering what is here, well, you're just gonna have to wait and see now, aren't you? Because y'all, it was a lot of fun. As you can tell, we have this really nice kind of gold green eye happening that I'm living for. But I do wanna talk to you guys about this little complexion system we have going on because I'm having some things that are good, some not so good, just kind of like some current thoughts happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the up close for you guys so you can take a look while I'm looking. But basically what I'm having issues with right now with this foundation are just that overall, it seems seems to be looking a little bit more dry on my skin than I would like. Um, it's settling into my smile lines a little bit around my nose. It's definitely settling in a little bit between like the furrow of my brows. And just overall, I feel like on the planes of my face, it looks a little bit drier than I would like. Now, that doesn't mean that this is a bad foundation by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't know if it's a texture that works with all three of these components together. I do feel like I just look a lot drier than usual. And I will tell you, because it has nothing to do with the other video, I have went in with multiple dewy sprays. In that video, I went in with my Smashbox spray, which is not dewy at all. But after that, I went in with my ABH spray. That didn't help. Off of camera, I went in with my NYX Bear With Me spray. That didn't help. I'm about ready to go in with this spray. This is the Pixie Glow Mist. And this, girl, this is the glowiest of the glow. And I only sprayed it a couple of times, just a couple very, very light, small mists, because this literally has like oil that floats in it. So it is very, very dewy. From what I can see up close, that definitely helps spraying it with that spray. So I think this is going to be one of those type of foundation slash systems that does prefer a glowy situation at some point, like a very, very luminous face. I will tell you guys right now, before the end of the day even gets here, this powder, don't know that this is for me because it makes me cough. I've never coughed at all like I have with this setting powder like to the point where I used it on camera with you guys I was coughing you saw me not lying and then when I was off of camera in my other video I was like hey I'm gonna bake with this so I threw a little bit you know under the eyes on the jaw per usual and I could not stop coughing even in that video I just was <laughs> and it went on and on and on until I removed the powder once the powder was gone I was completely fine but as long as that powder was on my face I coughed and I coughed and I coughed but other than that you guys I'm going to run off I'm gonna go do some stuff and I'll be back at the end so hang tight and I will be right back all right you guys it is officially the end of the day and your girl's been over here wearing this foundation situation combination 
all the Asians for over 10 hours. And I'm here to tell you my final thoughts, what I think. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to throw in, I think, the close-up first and then kind of elaborate a little bit on how I ended up this way. So let's go ahead and look at that. You will start off to see some mild creasing through the smile lines. Um, those were pretty, pretty quick to form. Um, I would say within like the first hour or two. They definitely happened before I even went off of camera to do my uh, check-in for the first part of this video. So those happened pretty quickly, as did the ones in between my eyebrows. So overall, what do I think of this foundation? Well, I'm going to actually back way up to when I was first wearing it last time I left camera. So as you guys could kind of tell back in that close-up and back when I was talking to you about it, um, I wasn't a big fan of how it was sitting on the skin. I felt like it was very, very dry. And that's really, really shocking for me because that dryness did not go away on its own. And this is one of the first foundations I have ever tried where that really, really like hyper matte and it wasn't even matte. It was just so dry feeling on my face and like tight up through here. That never dissipated. Truth be told, on camera, I think I told you guys, I went in with multiple like sprays and setting sprays that were on the dewy to luminous side of things. And of course, you already heard the list of sprays, but what really gets me is that that list was capped off with the Pixie Glow Mist. And even that was not enough. I actually ended up going out later today, like out into the world, had to go to the store, yada, yada. And I had to take a mini Catrice Dewy Glow setting spray with me and for anybody that's followed me for any length of time that is an amazing spray very very dewy from the drugstore it settles down it looks gorgeous and you guys I had to douse my face in that I'm not talking just like my normal like ch -ch -ch. no I mean ch -ch 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 -ch, like multiple spray sprays more sprays than I have ever had to put on at one time for one foundation and I don't know why this pulled so freaking dry on me and I don't know this worked on anybody else so maybe it was dry for everyone I'm not sure I always tell you guys if you're new here at the end of every foundation review I like to tell you how I would change or tweak it how I would mix it in like what I would do with it what I think it's good for so on and so forth and this is one of those rare foundations for me that I'm kind of like Ooh, like I don't really know with this foundation if there was anything that I thought was really nice about it or really you know redeemable um, I think if I were to use it again I would definitely have to mix it with something on the more dewy more luminous side I think a good contender for that would actually be the pure four-in-one love your selfie um, this is in the shade LN6 and I think this would add a little bit of depth of color which would be really nice but I think it would also add that really beautiful luminosity and some coverage so if I was going to mix it I think it would be with this guy um, because not only does this this foundation needs some luminosity it needs just some like overall moisture into the skin or something because for me and it wasn't one of those things too by the way before y'all try to come for me it has nothing to do with the color of this being too light or the weird the, and it has nothing to do with color it literally on my cheeks right up through here it felt tight like it felt too dry now the primer I don't think is a bad primer it wasn't like an overwhelmingly wow oh my god I love this primer primer for 60 bucks do I think it's something you need honestly at this point no um, but I will test this out with some other foundations and see if maybe it's just an issue with this foundation. Now, I do wish the packaging on this was a little bit more luxe. You can see down here, it's just like a straight up standard black like plastic bottle. To me, like the juxtaposition of this up against this really, really beautiful bottle of foundation is just so different. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just like an aesthetics thing, but just, it feels like this one is worth like $15.99 and this one might be worth like 60 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how luxurious the difference is. Now I do feel the same way about the packaging and component of the powder. Um, I feel like this just overall aesthetically wise, it's not the most appealing. It's not as beautiful as the foundation, much more in like that $15.99 price point, like the primer, again, personal opinion. Um, for me, this is a rough one though, because it made me cough so, so bad. Now, obviously I did purchase these things, so I will try to use it again, but I can't guarantee that I will be able to because I mean obviously if it continues to make me cough after one use then there might be an issue there but I am curious to try this as well with another foundation and really just isolate what is going on because the actual powder itself if I can get past the coughing aspect of it it isn't bad it was very nice it settled down it was smooth it was very lightweight but it wasn't so smooth and so lightweight um, like like the Fenty powder or even the Jeffree Star powder this had a little bit of a different texture to it to where it wasn't as slippery and as fine 
fine as those powders are. I'm also, by the way, going back to that whole color thing, this foundation oxidized on me continuously throughout the day. Like, I don't think you can really see it in like studio lighting, but when I was out in the car, even my mom was like, wow, I think your face got darker because it did. So not only did the tone, like the undertone continue to oxidize, so did the color. Like it got deeper and a little bit more warm, a little bit more yellow, and your girl doesn't live for that. So those are my thoughts. I'm definitely going to go and watch other people's reviews on this now, see what they think, see if anybody else had a comparable experience to mine, because this was a big old hot mess express, toot toot, beep beep, coming through, and I'm just, I need to see what other people thought. So I'm going to go do that. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and on Twitter, because of course they are linked down in that good old description box, honey. And if you haven't done so yet, also, hello, hi, please don't forget to subscribe. You should do that before you go. It's free. I'm pretty fabulous. I'm here Monday through Friday between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in northern Michigan, y'all. That's five videos a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they go up bright and early. Did I mention 6 to 7 a.m.? So if you're looking to get up and watch something and talk about makeup and learn about what's new and really just get all the feelings, all the opinions, all the thoughts going on, I'm your girl. So subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You know when you see some people smile and they just... Like, the, it looks uncomfortable. They're like... <laughs> I said, here's your one fan's chance. What? Here's your one fan's chancy? <laughs> That's wrong. No, 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 no,